This is my enameling studio. I have the kiln right here. Small jars of the various powdered glass which is used. My workspace to apply the glass to copper metal. This is the inside of the kiln, which is made of ceramic fiber. It's about seven by seven inches wide and five inches tall. A little black dot in the back is the thermocouple to control temperature. It's hard to clean off the bottom of the kiln, so I use a ceramic plate to catch any loose glass powder so it doesn't get permanently adhered to the kiln. Here I'm getting ready to dust on powdered glass onto the copper. Copper is a one inch disc that's been cleaned with Penny Bright, a mix of citric acid and pumice, which makes it easier for the glass to adhere. This is an example of ultramarine glass. It's been added to a 40 mesh sifter. Sifted by sprinkling coating of powdered glass onto the copper. It's now ready for the kiln. Since glass is only on one side of the copper, I can put it on a stainless steel mesh screen to hold it up off the kiln floor. So now I'm putting the nail piece into the kiln. The kiln is set at 14 70 Fahrenheit or about 790 Celsius and we do that for two minutes. When I look into the kiln I use these green goggles to cut down on the infrared radiation it's pretty safe to look inside once in a while, but it's best long term to wear protective goggles. Here's a piece after it's been fired. As you can see it's now shiny, no longer a powder. The backside had no enamel coating, so the copper has oxidized. And you can see some of the black oxide popping off as the piece cools. The red oxide is another form of iron oxide. And both of these need to be removed before we do the another firing, otherwise it will contaminate the kiln. There's two ways to clean the copper. For a small flat piece like this, I can use Penny Bright, which is a pumice citric acid combination that polishes up quite nicely. The other way to clean it is with a pickling solution. In this case, I use vinegar and salt, and the combination causes the you know, copper oxide to dissolve and create this blue color. This is very toxic to aquatic uh, fish and other species, so. It's not something you can dispose of unless you do it properly. This piece has now been cleaned on the bare copper side. As you can see, the shiny enameled side that we just fired. Cleaning takes more time than the actual firing of pieces. I'm putting a goldenrod color on this side. Sift it. Make a nice even coating on the outside and then on the inside. Next I'm going to put a little bit of a red and a dark orange color on top in this tiny little sifter.
These two colors contain cadmium. I'm wearing a face mask so I don't get exposed to the dust. Because there's enamel on both sides, we now have to use what's called a trivet to hold it. Otherwise, the glass would melt and fuse it to the uh, screen that we were using before. This is the hot piece out of the kiln. The colors will turn to their more natural state as the piece cools. For fire safety, I have this piece of steel on top of ceramic floor tiles on top of a plywood base. This allows the uh, heat to dissipate. After the second firing, there's a black edge of copper that you can either leave there or you can use a stone to scrape it down. This is what the stone looks like. It lets you polish the glass itself or take off the oxide. And that's the finished piece. Took two two minute firings, a little bit of cleaning in between. And that's the basics of doing enamel. The colors I used here were opaque enamels. You cannot see through them. There's also a collection of transparent ones that work particularly well in silver or a white opaque on copper.